This is a Lego Knight, and this is a Lego Dragon. In this video, I challenge myself to build both these minifigures their own unique castle for the medieval area of our Lego city called 23ville, and it went horribly wrong. That's right, we're doing two houses in one video. I want to transform these empty base plates into a thriving medieval world full of knights and dragons, each led by their team captains. First is the Knight of the Yellow Castle. It's a pretty average figure. Shame that this great torso gets covered up with this interesting logo there. And the best part is clearly the new hobby horse piece that you can kind of pretend to ride on, sort of. But a lot of your name suggestions fail to realize that she's a girl, <laughs> so I like this one. Kelly. Or Nile. Yeah, let's just let the difference call her Nelly. And the green dragon costume minifig captain is literally just a recolor of the red one from series 18, but still pretty cool. It reminds me of that Godzilla costume from series 5. We've got a nice little squad of dragons going on here. Our channel members actually named this one. You can click that join button below to get access to exclusive sneak peeks, custom emojis, and other perks. But they suggested Charlotte. Now, Kelly and Charlotte are sworn enemies, and we have to build each of their factions a fortress strong enough to withstand the battle at the end of this video, which is gonna be intense. So we better get started on Nelly's castle. We're not building it out of gray or tan or even white. No, no, no. We're going Going back to the oldest Lego castle set ever made for inspiration, the classic yellow castle. Back in 1978 when this was made, Lego bricks only came in a few colors, so they made the first castle bright yellow, the same color as human flesh. We already have a lot of yellow in the city, but since it's literally in her name, we kind of have to do this. Apparently I own a few of the pieces from the original set, not sure where I got them from, but they're going to be important details to include. Like in the front gate, we can use this pink banner sticker that matches Kelly's plume. I don't have this string from the OG drawbridge, but we do have chains now, which make our drawbridge way cooler. I couldn't figure out a crank mechanism, but you can still raise and lower it with relative ease to keep that nasty Charlotte out, who really wants her castle to win in the height department. But building something this tall while still making it super detailed is a daunting task. So I'm approaching it bit by bit, designing different layers of detailing repeated on all four sides, like an onion or an ogre. You know, we almost named this thing Elizabeth. But anyways, I made this bottom layer using fences sandwiched between these big arch pieces. I used a lot of slopes and these telescopes I stole from a sailor for layer two. Then to support a floor here, we can build green pillars, the same color as Charlotte to put in the middle and cover everything up with plates. There's a peg jutting out in the front to attach something amazing on later. And above that, I rounded out the entryway built into the front wall with torches and a light gray border to surround these big imposing doors we use all the time. Open the gates! Above that, I built a dragon decal that kind of looks like a bat, but it's not, it's not a bat, it's a dragon. And for the rest of the walls in this layer, I used minifig ladders, binoculars, and a minecart track for extra detail. But on the inside, we've got these big banners embroidered with another dragon decal that come in blue, red, and yellow to add an extra splash of color to the dragon museum we're building in here with all sorts of dragon themed artifacts on display, like a fire dragon from Ninjago, ender dragon head from Minecraft, dragon tooth I stole from this poor little guy, and these suits of armor with dragon shields and a dragon plume. Another dragon shield, the scroll from Kung Fu Panda, the house of the dragon, a dragon ball from some anime, I don't know, a piece from the Lego game Lava Dragon, and a ring someone stole from Smog. Finally in the middle we've got a magic pearl from a crate dragon. But all this museum talk is really starting to drag on, so we need to work on this some more. You can't have a drawbridge without a moat, but we need it to be freshwater for reasons. So to separate it from the saltwater ocean, I'm raising everything up on this rock formation. These marbled big ugly rock pieces are the coolest thing ever. So I covered everything in dark green grass that matches them. For the water, I'm using this teal color covered in transparent blue bricks for a shimmery effect built up in a gravity defying circle, complete with a cascading waterfall. So far, none of these colors existed in 1978, but to support the colors that did, I'm actually gonna use Duplo. If you didn't know, these larger bricks for toddlers can actually connect with Lego, both on the top and the bottom. They use Duplo for the inside of those giant Legoland statues, and I'm using it to save pieces supporting this middle island up, which turned out a bit smaller than I expected. I have no idea how I'm gonna fit the rest of the castle here, and there's still no way to get up. Both those sound like future me problems, so for now, let's go back to our dragon museum. I built some rafters up here to hang the chandelier I made with a bunch of mini candles attached to a wagon wheel using illegal building techniques. It's a little low headroom-wise, but that's how you can actually see it through the open door. I got these Technic pole things to round off the corners like this. Had to destroy a Lego spiral staircase to get one, but that's fine. We never use these things. My goal for the next layer was to start to slope everything inwards on each of the sides while not going crazy listening to this. All right, stop. Please. I really like the gray stripe that zigzags all the way around using this cool technique of combining slopes. I tile everything off and it's supposed to be a square, so not sure what happened there. But I made this removable floor that we can gently attach on. 
perfect. I built up the next layer and the next one using droid arms and megaphone pieces. Hey! And now the tower is the exact same height as this black box that came in the mail. But let's open that later. For now, I wanted to make windows using these jail bar pieces on their side. Okay, that might be illegal. Except it required studs on the side, on the side, on the side, on the side building techniques to get it flush with the rest of the wall. That's quadruple snot. But then it was just a matter of filling in all the weird gaps it's created on all four sides using these diving stick things. On the inside behind the removable wall, I want to build a place for the dragon squad to hang out. So I got some wood pieces to build a dinner table surrounded by these stools for Charlotte, the red dragon, Godzilla. Uh, this is definitely a dragon. Uh, hold on, gotta take off his tail. There we go. And the invisible dragon. You gotta love this one. Comment below what we should name these guys. Speaking of which, based on some comments from the last episode, we're putting the Minecraft pig on the straw floor, series 12 costume on the stick floor, and Miss Piggy on the brick floor. Don't need these other pigs now, so... On a completely unrelated note, I built this platter to serve a suckling pig to the squad with lots of hot dogs. And I think it's time to go back to the yellow castle. These side towers from the original probably won't fit here anymore unless we put them on this side of the moat. Kind of defeats the purpose of the moat keeping you safe. But we can build the side walls and use these arches over the moat, which makes it even less safe. But we can add these battlements on top to actually give the knights a fighting chance. That's knights plural because Nelly is hiring a sharpshooter named Robert Inhood to defend the castle at long range. That's right. Go Go back to your interior decorating, where we've got a little stand for drinks, an awesome design for a flower pot in the back, a candelabra up on the wall, and a holder for umbrellas after a chilly day in the rain. What a lovely little interior. Let's just forget about what they're eating and move on to the next layer sloping upwards. These corners are kind of fun. I tile it all off for the final removable floor that's actually the same size as the stick house from last time. This thing is massive. So big that I had to take this chunk off and build on it separately because it was just getting too tall. For this layer, I used these gate pieces with plates pushed into the back Backside may or may not be an illegal building technique, but the main feature of this floor will be this dragon stained glass window made from a bunch of transparent pieces. Incorporating it into the wall is gonna be tricky. I got this janky setup sort of working, but we can make this circle of arches to frame around it. Looks a little bit better. But speaking of arches, I mirrored the front of the yellow castle on the backside, except without the arches, leaving space on the top here for a ladder to get up to this level. I can't access my drawbridge clip anymore, so I replace it with this weight that has just enough friction to stay both open and closed, which is very satisfying now. But this main floor is way too plain. I'm not the best at designing floors, so to fill up some of this empty space, I built this enclosure around the ladder using the original set's windows and this door I found from it as well. Then in these barrels, we can store some extra weapons and ammunition. I didn't film myself building this top part because I'm getting a little sick of reaching over everything and resting my hand on these base plates to build. It's just such a mess here with my professional lighting and camera setup. Sometimes I'm just crawling onto the table, dropping pieces behind. It's a royal pain. Like the royal king. Gerald. Every castle needs a king, so I built Gerald this throne to sit on and overlook his kingdom with some flags behind him. Gotta keep an eye on those dragons. For the rest of the walls on this floor of theirs, we don't want to block out all the lights, so I designed these intricate windows using chains, fire, and these spinny platforms wedged under an arch. I struggled making this one removable-ish, but that's what we can decorate inside here after we finish this thing. It's gotten a bit too narrow at the top, so I widened it out and added these side assemblies to attach these slightly evil-looking horns onto. Now we just need a good centerpiece. No, 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 what? No, maybe, no, no, definitely not. I think this molded dragon could work. So I took an old fire piece with these pegs on it that connect perfectly inside its mouth and to each other. Now it's spitting straight fire. And if I connect both sections back together, this is officially the tallest thing we've ever built. Though not quite as high as the tallest official Lego set. Inside this top floor, I want to make a vault for all the golden treasures Charlotte has plundered in a big pile that you can swim through like Scrooge McDuck. We actually did build a Lego money bin for the DuckTales figs a while ago full of golden and studs which we can immediately seal along with a whole bunch of other stuff like jewels, gold bars, coins, cash money, all these swords, helmets, pretty much everything including the kitchen sink. All secure for the coming battle. But this particular treasure looks familiar. I think it's finally time we open this. Felt. There's the YouTube letter and there's the play button. Packaged by Rick. Thank you, Rick. And thank you all 100,000 of you. When we started this channel over five years ago, I never thought we'd get one of these. But thanks to all your incredible support these past few months, here we are. It looks ridiculously cool hanging over the city like this, mess and all. But I cleaned everything up and finally moved the Dragon Tower into place. It's not really attached to anything per se, but it, it shouldn't fall over, hopefully, maybe. Maybe. We do need to replace the backdrop now though because we've already outgrown it. It's weird that this has happened twice. Very frustrating to get it all set up, but I'm so glad it's done now. <sighs> yeah, 
I probably should move the play button on this side of the paper, but we're not done yet. Both these things need a staircase to get up and some landscaping before the battle can commence. I had to get creative building a spiral staircase for the castle because of course we stole the middle for the tower. It works surprisingly well, but I felt bad for stealing so many things for the dragons. So I stole these horn pieces and a flexible tube to make this amazing skeleton bridge connected to the front peg here and this entryway to symbolize that stealing is bad. But before we finally unleash death on the world, we gotta add some more life first. With paths, bushes, and apple tree that makes it even easier to climb over the moat, I'm loving all this greenery. There's a shark in the ocean and freshwater crocodiles in the moat. For over here, I built a viewing tent using this fabric from a camper set. And now spectators can watch the big event. No, I'm just kidding. It's cool how you can use this hobby horse head as part of a mechanical horse ride, but that belongs in an arcade. We actually want a jousting arena here to compete in. At one point, I considered buying the Lion's Castle set to compare it with our builds here and add some of its minifigures to the area, but I am not gonna spend $400 on a set for one video. That would... <coughs> That'd be crazy. So we're just gonna have to make our own minifigs. We've got Sir Tyler for the other jouster. He's actually wearing his fake horse, so now whoever drops their sword first loses. Then there's Sir Monty to practice sword fighting with, Sir Duckington to make sure no crocodiles fall out of the moat, and Dave to watch the jousting. Hey there. We also called in Agent Murphy in his troubadour disguise from series 22 to serenade everyone while he's not on assignment. The coins he came with actually have the same logo as Nelly, which is kind of cool. But to even out the teams now that it's eight versus five, the dragon summoned some help. Now there's Elizabeth. Hey, quit eating that. It took me like an hour of struggle to hang this up with fishing line, but it was kind of worth it. But after some brief backstory on screen here, let's cue the music and have the final battle commence. took forever to clean up, but the factions finally came to a truce with each other. They could both sense a growing evil power in this land, one they would need to join their forces to defeat. <laughs>